Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. This is your look ahead updated on Saturday, the 18th of April. Thanks again for watching. Now we've been updating our guidance to private clients this week for the early part of summer, so running through May, June and also July. Um, now of course this service here is free of charge on weatherweb.net, but for private clients they're paying for that information. Um, but you can get hold of that information as well. I've put it together in a video which is available now. Uh, you go to YouTube or it's available via weatherweb.net just on the right hand side here. And you will see uh, it says here, look, weather web.net premium video um, that's uh, last 15 minutes it's a full discussion of the latest model outputs the impacts that could be affecting the weather through May June and July um, and it gives you a full discussion as to what we're expecting to affect the UK during the next three months now I know um, that um, most of what we do here on WeatherWeb is free of charge, but I hope you understand that we have to charge for that premium information because we're already charging our uh, private subscribers for it. But it's just so that you have the option, if you want it, to be able to go and view that data as well. And that's available for you to watch now. You just purchase it online. Now to today's video, El Nino. Yep, yeah, that's the uh, topic of today. And uh, some talk, as you might remember at the end of March, of a super El Nino developing. Much of that was down to the forecast coming out of the CFS V2. Uh, but this is the output from the JMA. So this is the Japanese model, which you know actually is my preferred longer range model anyway, as well as the ECM WF. It's just I can't show you the ECM WF32 output uh, on the website here. But um, this is the output from the JMA. Look, the months are across the bottom here. And you see this prediction of the um, El Nino event really getting going during uh, June and into July and becoming a moderate and perhaps even potentially strong feature here by the time we're getting through to September, October. Now that ties in with the forecast coming out of the UK Met Office, uh, the ensemble model for that is suggesting that we go kind of midway into a moderate uh, El Nino. And this is the famous one, this is the CFS V2, which just goes absolutely crazy on it, you can see here. Getting us into a very strong El Nino event by the time we're getting into October. And of course, other forecasting centres making their predictions as well. So if we put them all together, this is the plume of the uh, ENSO predictions. And the middle line here is through here, which is suggesting a moderate event at about 1 to 1.25 degrees. Probably getting its act together come uh, late part of June and into July. Although we have to apply extreme caution with this one because, as you probably remember, um, last year a Super El Nino was predicted and it never got going. So we do have to apply a level of caution to these forecasts. But all now are in that camp, or majority are in that camp, of saying, well, look, it looks like it is going to be uh, a moderate El Nino event. Now, if we look at recent moderate El Nino events. This is from ggweather.com and what they've done here is plotted up the El Nino events going back to 1950 using data from NOAA. And the moderate events are lying through here. Now, if we take those moderate events with a similar scenario to the one that we're facing at the moment, this is what we come up with when we look at the 500 millibar flow, the average 500 millibar flow through May, June and July. Doesn't make a particularly very pleasant reading, does it? This is the anomalies of the 500 millibar flow. You see the below normal heights look across the west and to the north of the UK, above normal down towards the south, and the jet screaming through here with a ridge across the uh, parts of uh, Eastern Europe running into Scandinavia as well. Now, as far as it goes, you won't be surprised to see this one showing below normal pressures look towards the west and the northwest of the UK during those years normal rainfall across northern parts of the UK and to the west of the UK too, as well as cooler than normal air temperature. Cooler conditions extending down into north and western parts of France and the north and the west of Spain and Portugal as well. At that point you might be tearing your hair out and thinking, well that looks like the most awful start to summer, but remember that's for the three month period. Um, I, I talk far more about this in the premium video that I mentioned, uh, but 
I've got a theory on this one, okay, and we can pick it up from the CFS because the CFS, the JMA, and other models are going with a, a similar sort of idea. Look at this. This is May, okay. It's a prediction for uh, precipitation anomalies during May, and it shows the UK, northern and western parts of France, as being largely dry, or what I should say, of course, is drier than normal. Then look at the forecast for June, okay. Near a normal uh, precipitation totals, drier across the north, becoming wetter though. Look across Ireland and across Iberia as well. And then add in July, and look, wetter than normal month through July. So the story that I think is developing here is of a drier May and June. So this very, very early part of summer, but then late June into July turning wetter. And the potential there, and remember this is a long range forecast, so absolutely anything could change. And as I say, I'd discuss it more and the potential scenarios in the premium video. But the potential is there for July to become the wetter, cooler month. And it may be with that El Nino developing, with the AMO starting to drift into the negative phase, that this kind of pattern develops through July and into the very early parts of August for some very unsettled conditions across the UK and cool conditions too across the UK and across northern parts of Europe. But if that comes off, then the knock-on effects into autumn are also interesting and for the following winter. So the moderate El Nino forecast seems to be the one that's being settled on and it does certainly have these implications as we go forwards. And as I say, lots more in the uh, premium video. Uh, but hopefully this has given you a, a good taste of where we're going with things just at the moment and how things are developing as we head into the summer period. Really, the next couple of weeks are absolutely crucial in dictating what this pattern is going to be and how things are going to turn out. OK, I'll leave you with that for now. Don't forget, if you want to forecast for the next couple of days, check out our fast forecast. But for now, whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.